Right, so we've defined a concept of enthalpy, and we want to apply this concept of enthalpy to reactions now. So what we define is a standard reaction enthalpy, and we give it that symbol. So we say delta R H with a standard symbol. So this little symbol indicates standard conditions, and of course the subscript R refers to reaction. So wherever you see the R everywhere, it refers to reaction. And this implies that we're looking at the pure unmixed reactions, reactants and unmixed products in their standard state. So how we model or do the calculations is we sort of think of, let's say for example, a reaction where it's A plus B giving C plus D. How we look at reaction enthalpy is we look at if A was alone, what will it uh, formation enthalpy B. If B was alone, what would it be and whatever. So we don't actually think of them as mixing and then we sum them together uh, in some kind of way to determine uh, what is the actual reaction enthalpy. So that's how we think about um, the components and we'll later on look at how can we calculate reaction enthalpy given the formation enthalpies of any species in a reaction. Right, so you need to think, so it's a very theoretical construct. It's uh, normally you would measure these using um, graphs and plot or plots of certain thermodynamic data that you measure. But how we look at it is as A, B, and then C and D, not A plus B, if that makes more sense. Right, um, delta RH, we give it a unit, and just as enthalpy had, it has kilojoule per mole. But in this case, we want to call it kilojoule per mole reaction. And now, of course, the question comes in, what on earth does per mole reaction mean? Now, per mole reaction is sort of a, a more complex way of trying to just say kilojoule per mole. It's being very specific about what um, is actually included in the calculation. So it means per mole of a reaction in its base form. So what does it mean for a reaction to be in its base form? So let's see, for example, HCl plus sodium hydroxide forms, and of course, water and sodium chloride. What this means is, are there any numbers, any stoichiometric coefficients, which can be made smaller? No, this is the base um, equation. So this is defined as one mole of this reaction. So for example, delta RH naught could be, let's say, seven for this reaction. If you then were to increase the stoichiometry, so in other words, you make it, for example, 2 HCl plus 2 NaOH gives 2 water plus 2 sodium chloride. The delta RH changes with the same factor. So to get from there to there, we had to say, we said mod, mod times two. So this one is then equal to 14. So that's basically what it means. If you look up a enthalpy value, it must be for the lowest common um, stoichiometric combination. And if you look up a value, then it will be for the reaction as balanced in the given reaction, right? So we'll look at a couple of examples which will hopefully uh, simplify those concepts. Um, importantly, the states of these reactants, in other words, a solid, a liquid, a gas, aqueous, are important. So for example, if you had gaseous HCl and you had aqueous here, you couldn't have, you, you won't be able to compare those two equations. Um, 
because the delta R H for the first one is for when HCl is in the gas phase. It will have a completely different uh, enthalpy value of reaction for if it is in the aqueous phase. Uh, right. We have spoken about the number of moles of reaction. Um, so it's essentially what you can think about this times two that we had here is first a reaction occurs where one HCl reacts with one NaOH to form the product. And then if we add another one, so another HCl reacts with another NaOH, that's then we need to sum the enthalpies. So that's what the two in this case actually implies. It means this reaction is happening twice or three times or four times or whatever. Uh, you know enthalpy when it's a negative value, it's an exothermic reaction. If it's a positive value, then it's an endothermic reaction. So it keeps with that same idea of heat and enthalpy that we looked at earlier. And the final one is a bit of an important note. So it says values of the same uh, reaction enthalpy are numerically the same, but opposite in time for chemical reactions that, that are reverse of each other. So that means, for example, if you have a reaction where A decomposes to B, um, then let's say your delta RH under standard conditions is equal to 12. And you look at the reaction where B is to A. So in other words, you swap the reaction on the left-hand side around. Then it means that delta RH naught for this reaction is going to be minus 12. So those are our relationships that we've looked at thus far. So we know how a reaction scales. So if it scales with a common number, we can multiply that common number to the enthalpy. If a reaction swaps around and happens, it happens in the reverse order, we multiply by minus one to get the reaction enthalpy of the reverse reaction. Okay, so those are the basics of reaction enthalpy. We're gonna look at a few other ideas around how to calculate it and so forth uh, later on.